Hezbollah published a list of statistics, apparently, trying to portray what he has been doing since day one of this war, targeting allegedly Israeli military targets. And here is something very interesting that the Hezbollah is doing in this statistics list, which is very interesting. He is inflating the statistics. Welcome to Dallas and welcome to Israel Under Fire. I'm Eric Stackelbeck and it is day 25 of Israel's war against Hamas terrorists in Gaza. Here is the state of play right now. Israeli forces say they are at the gates of Gaza City, which is the main stronghold of the Hamas terror group. And the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces so far, folks, have paid a heavy price. At least 11 Israeli soldiers have been killed so far in this operation, which has really broadened over the past several days. Of course, Israel, in the immediate aftermath of that Hamas massacre perpetrated on October 7th, the worst massacre of the Jewish people since the Holocaust, Israel responded immediately with major airstrikes throughout Gaza, weakening the Hamas terror infrastructure in the Strip. And now Israel has followed up with a ground invasion, air, land, and sea forces striking Hamas in Gaza. And folks, remember, Hamas has this elaborate underground tunnel network. It's called the Metro, where Hamas's leadership, thousands of fighters have burrowed themselves in, and they're taking shelter from the storm above, but the Israel Defense Forces are now going into those tunnels to root out Hamas terror once and for all. And as I mentioned a minute ago, this is fierce and bloody and deadly fighting. It's going to last for a while for Israel to accomplish its stated goal. Whether it's Israeli political leaders, military leaders, they have made very clear that the ultimate goal here is the complete and utter destruction of the demonic death cult known as Hamas so that these modern day Nazis just wearing different uniforms will never ever threaten the world's one and only Jewish state again. So keep the IDF right now, the people of Israel, the Israel Defense Forces, those brave soldiers in your prayers, folks. Look, I have good friends right now on the front lines entering Gaza. I'm thinking about them, praying for them around the clock. So join me and our entire team at TBN in that. We've seen our good friend Yair, who works for us in TBN, uh, TBN's Jerusalem studio. You've seen his regular updates here every single day. Think of Yair, pray for him as well. But moving on to the larger state of play, look, we've talked many times here on Under Fire over the past few weeks about this potentially becoming a multi-front war. Here is the update there. Number one, on the northern front. And remember, Iran has this ring of fire that surrounds Israel on all sides, whether it's Hamas or Islamic Jihad in Gaza, Hezbollah in southern Lebanon to the north. We've got these Shia militias in Iraq and Syria. And further south, we've got the Houthis in Yemen. More on them in a second, but up north is the main front that we're all watching. What is the deal with Hezbollah? Well, these engagements between the IDF and Hezbollah terrorists along the Israel-Lebanon border continue, and we've had close to 50 Hezbollah terrorists killed in battles with the IDF over the past few weeks. Also, at least seven Israeli soldiers have lost their lives. So in many ways, folks, you could say that the second front has already opened. Yes, it hasn't been a full-on Hezbollah onslaught, but all of us right now are closely watching what's happening in southern Lebanon. In the meantime, I mentioned the Houthis in Yemen. Funny name, I know, but it's a name that you need to remember. This is another, surprise, surprise, Iran-backed terror proxy group. Now, Yemen is some 1,000 miles south of Israel, quite a distance, but thanks to Iranian supplies and armaments, the Houthi rebels are able to reach Israel. And over the past few days, they have fired rockets, missiles, and attack drones in the direction of the Jewish state. Now, thankfully, 
Uh, a U.S. destroyer stationed in the Red Sea shot down some, and Israel also has intercepted these projectiles coming from Yemen, but it's clear we're talking, look, the northern front, the Gaza front, but it's also clear that the deep southern front in Yemen is also a growing concern for Israel. And then we have the homeland, and I'm talking about the U.S. homeland, where I'm coming to you from right now. We like to say here on Under Fire that what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East, and if you needed any more clear indication of that, folks, testimony yesterday by the FBI director, Christopher Wray, brought that home very starkly. Here's what he said about the possibility of Hamas attacks right here in the United States. Take a look. We also cannot and do not discount the possibility that Hamas or another foreign terrorist organization may exploit the current conflict to conduct attacks here on our own soil. But it's not just Hamas. As the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, the Iranians, for instance, have directly, or by hiring criminals, mounted assassination attempts against dissidents and high-ranking current and former U.S. government officials, including right here on American soil. And along those lines, Hezbollah, Iran's primary strategic partner, has a history of seeding operatives and infrastructure, obtaining money and weapons, and spying in this country. Folks, events unfolding right now in the Middle East eventually will profoundly affect all of us no matter where we live. And that's why we're so glad right now to be joined by my good friend, Middle East expert, geopolitical expert, joining us from Israel, our good friend Avi Melamed is here. Avi, always great to see you, my friend, and to get your insights on the state of play in the world's most volatile and chaotic region. We've got a lot to unpack, my friend, but first I want to ask you about Yemen a place maybe a lot of our viewers don't know a bunch about, but obviously in recent days, the Houthi rebels, the Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen have been quite active against Israel. What are they up to, and what is Israel's potential response against the Houthis? Eric, hi, shalom from Israel. Wonderful to uh, see you again together. Um, I'm very thankful and honored. Very significant, Eric. You mentioned the Houthis. Uh, very shortly, the Houthis are a congregation of Shiite tribes in mostly in northern part of Yemen. They are about 35% of the population. In 2014, the Houthis launched a military coup in Yemen, ousting the legitimate Yemenite government. And as you very accurately mentioned, they are massively supported by the Iranians. Now, you made a very interesting and significant notion, basically saying, look, Yemen is about 1,000 miles away from Israel. What's the Houthis' story? The common denominator, the answer is, of course, the Iranian regime. The Iranian regime has established this array of armies of terror across the Middle East. One of them is the Houthis in Yemen. They are massively armed by the Iranians. Missiles, drones, advanced military capacities. Today, as the Iranian regime is trying to apply a tactic of trying to deter Israel from totally destroying Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Gaza Strip, yet not involving their major proxy, the Hezbollah in Lebanon with the war, the Iranian regime ordered the Houthis to basically move ahead and launch those attacks on Israel. And as you accurately mentioned, Eric, earlier, the Houthis have been firing some um, ballistic missiles at Israel, attacking drone and, and rockets, and they have been all intercepted by Israel and the United States of America very successfully thus far. In fact, one of the recent missiles launched by the Houthis landed actually in Jordan. Wow. So it's just another manifestation of this enormous threat that the Iranian era of proxies, armies of terror scattered across the Middle East are presenting not only to the state of Israel, but to the region and beyond the region, to the world entirely. And I must say, you know, Eric, I know you for many years, and I think that you are one of the few media people in the United States of America that was accurately identifying the threat the Iranian regime presents, not only to Israel, for, but also for the United States of America, and you have been talking about it for many years. 
Avi, thank you so much, my friend. And many times on camera, I've been talking about it with you. You are one of the world's top Middle East experts, my friend. So it's always great to have you with us. And hey, as we're talking about this southern front in Yemen, the IDF, I would think right now, doesn't want to be fighting on multiple fronts if it can avoid it. But we've got to talk about the northern front, a place you and I have spent time together along the Lebanon border. Hezbollah seems to be taking some pretty heavy losses in these engagements with the Israel Defense Forces. How likely is it that the northern front develops into something much larger in the days and weeks to come? Yes, Eric, this is one of the most significant questions. You know, I have been saying from day one to this war that I've noticed that there is an Iranian dilemma regarding the question, should they order the Hezbollah to move into the war full steam ahead or should they, should they just kind of like keep Hezbollah out of the fight? And in that context, up until now, it's very clear that the Hezbollah, the bottom line, as of now, is out of the war. Now, there are some very interesting aspects in that regard that we should emphasize. One, the fact that the Hezbollah is, as of now, out of the war, enormously uh, aggravates Hamas leaders who don't conceal their anger because one of the major slogans that Hamas was marketing to its people, the Palestinian, was that when the time comes and there is a war with Israel, Hezbollah will join in full capacities. It didn't happen so far, and this is one thing that we should be aware of. That understanding explains something that I'm going to share with you, Eric, and your viewers. It's most recently updated. It's very interesting. Hezbollah published a list of statistics, apparently, trying to portray what he has been doing since day one of this war, targeting allegedly Israeli military targets. And here is something very interesting that the Hezbollah is doing in this statistics list which is very interesting. He is inflating the statistics. Why is it so interesting? Because Hezbollah up until now, relatively speaking, used to be very reliable with its reports. He is inflating the statistic because it's clearly one of the ways of the Hezbollah to try and to kind of like calm or address the mounting criticism by Hamas leaders who are aggravated by the fact Hezbollah has not joined the war yet. And then there is another interesting inside thing that I want to share with you, which is not less known in the world. I want to share it with you right now. You know, everyone is talking about the upcoming speech of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah that is supposed to take place this coming Friday. I want to share you with you something that is coming from my sources in Lebanon, which is a very interesting story, and it's very interesting to understand. Recently, in areas that are affiliated with Hezbollah, like the Dahya, the southern part of Beirut, which you are familiar with this whole story, the center, the power center of Hezbollah, and in other places in Lebanon, the number 313 appeared. Now, this is a very interesting story because you may wonder what does it mean, the number 313, and what does it have to do with Hezbollah's upcoming um, leader speech? Just to understand the nature of the challenge that we are facing right now when we are talking about Hezbollah and the Shiites-backed Iranian militias. 313 is a very significant number in the story of the Shiite narratives. This is the number of allegedly the militants, the fighters, who were basically fighting 1,400 years ago in the battle to take revenge of the blood of Hussein ben Ali, the major martyr, the martyr of the Shiites. And Shiites in Lebanon, right now, as we are heading towards Hezbollah's leader's speech on Friday, they are echoing the story of 313, and one of the reasons, Eric, they are doing that is because notice the date of this speech. It's going to be November 3rd, 2023. Wow. This is what we are dealing with. 
Yeah. Uh, an apocalyptic ideology, an apocalyptic worldview, Avi. Uh, it's clearly uh, not only with Hezbollah. You got Hezbo it right. Yeah, not only with Hezbollah. You Hezbo got it totally right. Yeah, it's apocalyptic, no doubt. And not only for Hezbollah, but the Iranian regime. Last question, Avi. We've got about a minute left before we let you go. You and I have spent time further to the south with another apocalyptic-minded Iran-backed terror group, Hamas. We've been along the Gaza border together, including in Nakhalos, one of the great communities in southern Israel that was rampaged by Hamas. Your quick take, uh, Israel, will it accomplish its goal of decisively crushing Hamas eventually? I know it's gonna be a very tough fight. It is a very tough fight. It is a war, Eric. We are paying heavy price. Israel is determined to wipe out Hamas rule in Gaza Strip. This is the interest of Israel. This is the interest of the region. This is the interest of the free world. If we want to have any chance for stability and progress in the Middle East and prospect, we have to take down military capacities, Hamas military capacity. We must make sure that Hamas and Islamic Jihad will not be any longer a relevant player in the story of the Middle East. Absolutely. Avi, you said it. You're, you're right on target. If Hamas and Islamic Jihad live to fight another day, it sends the absolute wrong message to the Iranian regime and Hezbollah and Israel's other enemies. Avi, so great to have you, my friend. Thanks for keeping an eye on this for us. And we'll have you get back again very soon. God bless Avi Mohamed. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Eric. Take care.